Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our TypeScript series. So in this video, we are going to talk about that. How can you prove that TypeScript is a statically type language? We will see the concept of type inference also and the type annotations as well. We know that, okay, JavaScript, when we write the JavaScript code here, and if I'm creating any a variable, for example, let's say I'm creating a variable at age, and let's say I'm not giving any value to this particular age right so let's see if i'm writing age dot see i have no idea that what operations i can perform it here right same thing if i let's say i'm going to create one uh first name variable and in the first name i'm not giving any value right and then i'm writing that the first name dot see it's not giving me any properties or any methods over here right so java script is not a statically type language here you don't need to give that what kind of data you want to hold in this age. So for example, age is equal to 30, but in the next line, I'm writing age is equal to Naveen also in that case. So in that case, see, it is allowing me to use it. So age could be numeric value also, age could be a, a string value also, age could be a, a Boolean value also here in the JavaScript. So this is not a statically type language, but when you talk about in the, TypeScript. So for example, in the TypeScript, if I'm writing that, okay, this let, and then let's write the first name here. And then here we are defining the first name should be the string type. Now in this particular F name, I can hold only and only string type of data. For example, let's see, I'm holding Naveen here, but in the first name, if I'm defining, let's see 40 here, it will give you the error at the compile time. So this is the this is called the TypeScript is a statically type language. Here you can give the data type, right? Whatever the type of data you can define it here. So this feature is called type annotations in TypeScript, right? For example, let's see now if I really want to define any numeric type of data or any a number type of data, let's take a numeric value here. So let's see here I'm writing that number should be a number. Right. So in that case, in this particular number, I can define only and only number type of data. So let's see if I'm writing number is equal to 90, but now I cannot store any other data here, like true and false or uh, string values. I cannot define it here. It's giving me the error at the compile time. Right. So this is called a statically type language. Now, what if I'm defining, let's see a number here once again. So let's see N. I'm defining and n is a variable name and writing that number is equal to 50. So if you really want to assign in the same line that also you can do it here. So here, what is the difference here? I'm not assigning anything. Then in the next line, whenever I want to assign, I can assign it. But here in the same line, you can just creating a variable and assigning the value also, whatever the value that you want to assign, you can assign it here. If I really want to assign, let's see some, uh, some name or anything. So let's see, I'm writing that. Okay. What is the last name? I say, that, okay, last name should be the string type and the last name, let's see here, I'm writing uh, Peter here like that. So here, like this also, you can define it. Okay. But let's see if I'm creating a variable and then the variable name is, let's see, pop or uh, let's see some, any variable name, let's see test variable that I'm going to create. And then here I'm writing the test is equal to, let's see, I'm writing TypeScript, whatever the double quote value that I have given means the string value I have given here, but see this here, I have not given any type of test. So this is a property of the TypeScript that at the compile time itself, it will decide that what kind of on the basis of the data that you have assigned, it means what is the type of test. So in this case, the type of test is what the type of test is actually a string type of data that will be decided at the CT. CT means at the compile time. It will not be decided at the runtime. So you have two choices. You can assign the specific data type also. You can write it or without data type also on the basis of the value, it will be decided. So this feature is called type inference. Okay. So at the compile time, the type inference will be applied. And this feature, when you write colon data type, see colon number, colon string, something like this, this feature is called type annotations. Okay. If someone is asking you about what do you mean by type annotations, it means we are explicitly defining the type of the variable here. If you don't give the type of the variable, then at the compile time on the basis of the given value, 
it will be decided that what will be the type of the respective variable. So this feature is called type inference. For example, let's see if I'm creating another variable. Let's see here I'm writing that your bill amount. And then I'm not giving any data type like colon number or something. And bill amount is let's say 6000. So what is the type of this? The type of this it will be a number will be decided at the compile time. And that's why this feature is also called the type inference here. Right. Okay. Now. So just like that, we have a string number. So can we have other data types also? Of course, we can have a different various data type, Boolean, null, undefined, void, any, any type of data type, we can decide it over here. For example, let's see if I really want to declare a Boolean, let's see a user is active or not, something like this. Let's see, I'm creating a variable here. I'm defining that, okay, no, it should be Boolean. And the current value of this is true here like that. So this is active is behave like a Boolean data type other than Boolean true or false. I cannot assign any value here. Perfect. So that also we can do it. And remember in the number, whenever we declared a specific number, number can hold any integer value, any numeric value or any floating value in the string. We can define any character or any string value. We can define it there in the Boolean. We can define any Boolean type of data. We can define it here. Perfect. Now, if I want to declare, for example, let's see null type or undefined type. So let's say I really want to define some null and undefined can we define that do we have any type something like this yes so in typescript that is also supported so for example let's see if i'm creating a variable let variable and the variable name is uh, here i'm writing let's see city and then i'm writing city is right now null type of data and then i'm assigning the null over here so what is the type of city the type of city is actually null here so you can define like this also then let's see again, I'm writing, let's see country variable and then country is not defined. So here I can write undefined is the type of country. And what is the value of undefined? The value of value of undefined is undefined. So how exactly it will be treated? City is equal to null and country is equal to undefined. And the type of city and country will be null and undefined respectively here. So you can define like this also. Okay. Then we have another type that is called any type. Any is means any type of data I can hold in this particular variable. For example, let's see, I'm declaring a variable and the variable is, let's see, value variable and the value I'm defining that with the data type any, see any is a keyword that you can write it here. And initially, let's see, I'm declaring with 80 here. So initially I have given that any is sorry, value is equal to 80, which is any type of data. I can hold it in this value. So now in the value, let's see, I'm assigning some other value, some a string value, for example, let's see if I'm writing it. So here I'm writing, let's see, uh, dev here. That also I can assign it. Can I write value is equal to true or false? That's yes, that also we can assign it here. So any means any type of data, we can store it here. So if you are not sure about that, what is the type of that variable? You can write any. Generally used for the dynamic data. Whenever we have to use a dynamic data, data could be coming in the form of numeric or a string or anything then we can define this type of data. Then let's talk about the void data type. Void type, generally we used it for the function, right? A function, void means function, generally we use it with the function, does not return any value. So it means if a function is declared with the void data type or void type annotation, it cannot return any value. So for example, let's see if I'm writing a function here, that function, let's see the function name is just, I'm writing print hello. This function job is just to printing the hello. So here I'm writing that, okay, fine that let's print hello here. And this does not return anything. So although if you don't want to write, that is also fine. So what will happen? The return type of this function is a void by default at the compile time itself, it will be added. But if you really explicitly, if you want to tell that, okay, no, this function is a void type. So in other programming languages, what you used to have, let's see, for example, in the Java or in C sharp, we used to write void here, but here you don't need to write void here like this after the method name, after these two parentheses, put a colon and then you write void. So don't get confused with the syntax that 
what is void here void is a return type can we have another data type also or sorry another return type integer or, or number or a string or anything yes of course we can have it so for example let's see if i'm creating a function and the function name is let's see some get a number put it like this and then colon and i know that okay this will give me some number here okay like this and then get number i have created it means now the return type <coughs> What is the return type of uh, this function? The return type of this function is number here, which will be decided at the compile time because we have given it here. So now if I'm creating, let's see, return some number here, one, two, three. Now the error is gone. So remember one thing, if you have written number here, now it is mandatory for this function to return a number. But let's see, I'm writing instead of one, two, three, here I'm writing that a uh, test here. I'm returning a string. This is giving you error that how can you return a string because your return type is number. So that's why it says the type string is not assignable to type number, right? So that's what, if you have given number, you have to return a number only like one, two, three only. Same thing. If a particular function is declared with void in nature, it cannot return anything. It means if I'm writing a return, let's see one, two, three here. Void and return cannot be together, remember, because here both are contradictory, right? Because here you are saying that void is not returning anything, but here you are returning it. So this is not allowed here like this. But if you have written like this, this is allowed. It means void and return generally cannot be together. But here I'm not returning anything. I'm returning a blank value. I'm not returning anything from here. So like this also, you can write it. Okay, so to avoid the confusion, generally we don't write any return keyword with the void function. So return type could be anything. It could be a number also. It could be void also. It could be a string, boolean, whatever you want to return, you can return here. You can write any also, you can write it. So for example, let's see here I'm writing function and then let's see I'm writing get any value here like this. And then here I'm defining that, okay, yeah, the return type should be any. Now it's up to you, whatever you want to return. So now I'm writing fine that let's return uh, something. Let's see uh, testing here. You can return testing also, right? So it's not giving me any error. So what is the return type? RT means the return type is equal to any. In that case, it will be decided at the compile time once again on the basis of the value that you are returning. So right now the return type is testing with double quote. So that's why the return type, actual return type will be decided at the compile time. Okay, finally, we are returning a string from this function. Okay, so this is called whenever you write colon and the data type, this concept is called the type annotation. So for your reference, I'm writing it here. Let's see whatever the variable name that you are writing, for example, number, and I'm defining the data type here, number like this right like this also you can do it for example let's see if i'm defining name what is the data type i'm writing a string here so this is called type annotation if you don't write anything for example this is called type inference this is also type inference here because here i'm not writing any colon or something if you don't write it that is also fine it will be added at the compile time it will be checked that what type of data that you are defining typescript in double quote okay fine that the return type or the data type of this variable will be the string type or for this guy will be the number type. Okay, so if you write it or don't write it, TypeScript is always a statically type language. The type of data will be decided at the compile time, not at the runtime. So I hope this is clear, right? And the rest of the things will remain same. If you really want to call any function and everything, you can just simple call it and then again you have to compile it it will convert to a dot js file and then you can use it anytime whenever you want to use it let's take one more example that what if in a particular function i really want to define some parameters so can we pass the function parameters with the type of parameters yes that also we can do it here so let's see how to do this so let's take a simple example first let's see i'm creating one function and this function name is, let's see, one addition function here like this. It means this function will add two numbers. So here I'm writing, let's see, I'm not defining uh, any data type here. No type annotations here. I'm simply writing A comma B. That's it. And then I'm writing that, okay, return 
a plus b from this function. So see, I'm not writing any a colon number or a plus b colon number or something like that. So again, what will happen at the compile time, the type inference concept will be applied as what? As number, right? How exactly it will decide it? Because when I call this particular function addition, let's see I'm passing 10 comma 20. So what will happen in that case? 10 will be given to this guy, 20 will be given to B. So 10 plus A plus B is equal to what? A plus B in this case, 30. And 30 is what? At the compile time, it will be decided that the 30 is the resultant of A plus B is a number. So 30 is a number. So this function is actually giving me a number here. Perfect. So that will be decided at the runtime here. But if you really want to say that, okay, no, I explicitly want to define the type annotation means I really want to give the type of A and B also. So in that case, what will you do? So let's create this particular another function. Let's see one add function that I'm creating it. So here I'm writing A that give me what type of A, give me number comma B. This is also you have to give me the number here like that. And then I'm writing that return something from this function. Something means return A plus B. So obviously at the compile time, what is the return? The return also will be a number will be decided here. If you explicitly want to define, you can define once again, the return type of this function is what? I explicitly say that, okay, return type of this function is a number. So this is the perfect example. You can check in the function also that the data type, or oh, sorry, the parameter type of data, the parameter type is what both are numbers and return is also number. So how will you read this particular function? This function name is at this function is having two parameters a, which is what a number type and another parameter. This is also B. This is also a number type. And what is the return type of this function? The return type of this function is a number here like that. So this is more flexible, more readable that type annotation and the type inference concept, it looks like we are writing the code in Java or other uh, statically type languages like C sharp or Java. But same thing is not possible in JavaScript. In JavaScript, you don't need to define any number. Everything will be, I mean, you don't need to define any data type. Everything will be decided at the runtime. Okay, so that's why the developer's first choice is always TypeScript as compared to JavaScript in most of the frameworks like React or Vue or in test automation frameworks also because it's giving me more flexibility and more easy to uh, easy way to write the code, better readability. Plus, you can find the errors and the catch the errors while writing the code instead of after running the code, you are getting the error. So I hope this feature is uh, clear. What do you mean by statically type language? That's why the name itself is type because type of data is very important. That's why they have given the name as TypeScript here. That's all for this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video, guys.